All right, OTAs is well underway, and it's going to be camp before you know it, man. Like, it's June. Uh, you'll blink your eyes. It'll probably be time for camp. So, I mean, let's start looking at some position battles here. So, first, I'd like to start off with wide receiver. Uh, how many do you think they're going to keep on the team? And who do you think it's going to be, Mike? I think they're going to keep at least five, possibly six. Like, that's the way I see it. So, I think uh, Miko Hardman's a definite lock. Um, Juju and MVS are obviously definite locks. Sky Moore's got to be a lock. So, that's four. So, your fifth spot is a fight right now between Justin Ross and uh, Josh Gordon, Corey Coleman, Fountain, and Watson, I think is his name, the little guy they picked up from uh, Tampa Bay. Was that who it was? Yeah, I believe um, so. So, I mean, at this point, I think, I think with youth is the thing. I think Gordon kind of falls off of it. That knocks out him. And then, I mean, as of impressiveness and hype, I think you have to give it to Ross at this point. Ross is your five. And so does Fountain make the team for Dave Tobe special team reasons? Does Corey Coleman get a shot? Do they just stick with, you know, the little guy from Tampa Bay, Watson. I, Mahomes likes his speed. So, right. Well, I actually I saw, I actually saw in uh, OTAs yesterday, I believe it was. They said the most impressive play of the day was a, a catch down the middle uh, deep by Corey Coleman. So, I mean, there's definitely a lot of guys in this mix. So, you never know. I, I'm almost positive they're going to stick with six receivers. And I think if I had to guess right now, uh, it does kind of throw you off a little bit because like we were talking about previously, like who are they going to use on special teams? Uh, but I mean, you, you got to look at McCall, Juju, MVS, uh, Sky Moore, and then Justin Ross. I think those five, uh, they almost have to be a given in, in my opinion. I feel like those are the guys that you go with. I think that sixth spot could very well. It's just like you said, it's going to be a battle between Corey Coleman, Josh Gordon, and probably Darice Fountain. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that they stick with Josh Gordon. Uh, the only reason that I say that, not that they would use him in special teams. I think that, uh, you know, the young guys are going to get stuck with the special teams duties like Sky Moore. But um, I think that, you know, they went back and, you know, actually signed him again on this futures deal. They had to see something with – with Josh Gordon, is has he learned the playbook now? Does he, you know, more comfortable in the offense? Like, do they see that, you know, maybe he's got more to offer than what, what he has? Like, I, I don't know. I don't either. I mean, Josh Gordon's getting older, that's for sure. If he can perform to, to the way he looked, I mean, he's a weapon. Uh, you also got to consider our tight ends as well as as receiving weapons. Who's the tight end that come back from injury this year? The big guy, Jody Fortson. Yes, Jody Fortson. I like him. I mean, they're going to yeah. use him a lot too. So with Gordon and Fortson, we got some big wide receivers. MVS, he ain't, he ain't short. Right. And I think we're going to see. I think you're going to see a little bit more of uh, Noah Gray this year than we have. And I think he's going to do some things. So I think you're going to see a lot of Jody Fortson and Noah Gray out there with Travis Kelsey. So that could be interesting. Yeah, I think this uh, offense is going to look just a slight bit different. Yeah, for sure. So speaking of running backs, let's look at that position. So there's definitely going to be a battle there. I think that they're going to have four running backs, usually the typical uh, amount to keep on the team there. I think that you're looking at Clyde and Rojo, obviously. And to me, right off the top of my head, I'm going to say Derek Gore and Isaiah Pacheco. But they also have Jerry and Ely that they uh, sign. It's an undrafted free agent who me and you had actually mocked the Chiefs to take in the draft several times. Uh, very, very fast, super athletic, catches the ball of the backfield effortlessly. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot that can be done with him. And Jerry and Ely and Isaiah Pacheco offer you return men, like big time. They're both super fast. And they both know how to do that. So uh, how do you see the running back room panning out? I'm with you. I think Rojo and Clyde are givens. Um, Isaiah Pacheco, they signed him to, I think, a four-year deal already or something like that. So I think he probably gets it. Um it's between Gore and Ely. I think they probably like Gore's running style better, but Ely's got a shot because actually Ely can be used as a wide receiver. He can be used yeah. in the slot. So maybe he's that, that sixth wide receiver. Yeah. And that way he can play a little special teams. And so, uh, 
I mean, you know? that's kind of where my head's at. I know that Derek Gore was kind of the fan base's darling last year. He had a couple big 50-yard plays and things like that. And, I mean, he did play excellent when he needed to. But does Derek Gore have what it takes to – to beat out a Jerry and Ely, somebody that's very versatile and super athletic, you know, or Isaiah Pacheco, like uh, maybe it, maybe we've seen what we've seen of Derek Gore. Maybe he goes back to the practice squad. Maybe he goes on moves, you know, you know, gets cut, goes somewhere else. I mean, maybe it's the end of Derek Gore. I don't know, but I, I think if I had to guess right now, I would probably think that it's going to be Clyde Rojo, Pacheco and Gore. Yeah, I give Gore the slight edge at this point. But like I said, Ely, maybe they keep Ely too and use him as that sixth, or maybe they take a seventh wide receiver. Maybe they end up cutting one of these tight ends or something. Who knows? All right, let's move on to defense. Uh, We'll talk about one more position where there's a good battle going on. Uh, Cornerback. I mean, we got a boatload of them now. So and in my head, you're looking at Legarius Sneed, Rashad Fenton, and Trip McDuffie. You got Joshua Williams, Jalen Watson. We just got Lonnie Johnson Jr. in a trade. We still have DeAndre Baker, DiCaprio Brutal, and Luke Barku. So that's a big <laughs> list. It's a huge list. And also, they were also talking about uh, Nazi Johnson playing down in a corner and not at safety. So that's a huge list, man. So uh, how many do they normally keep? Usually five or six corners, correct? I'm not really for sure. I mean, you almost have to keep five or six because they usually play three or four corners at a time on the field, depending on your packages. So I'm going to think that they would probably keep five to six. So I'm thinking Legarius Sneed, Rashad Fenton, Trent McDuffie are your givens, right? And I think Lonnie Johnson's a given since you traded for him. That's where I'm getting ready to go here. A lot of people are really counting out Lonnie Johnson and they're not putting him in the mix in this conversation. I think they're forgetting what they're dealing with here because Lonnie Johnson was a freak athlete coming out of Kentucky. He He's excellent corner. And he went to Houston, and he got put in bad situations where he was not doing what he's good at, not what he was meant to do. They even pushed him into safety. I mean, it's just a horrible franchise. They didn't use him like he, uh, like he was meant to be. So with Lonnie Johnson getting traded to KC, they actually told him, like, hey, man, we're going to let you do what you do and put you back in that corner position and, and let you wreak havoc. So I think a lot of people are sleeping on Lonnie Johnson. I think he might, you know, be the third lock. Uh, I think Rashad Fenton is riding a fine line with that. So I, I think the six they keep is Fenton, Sneed, McDuffie. I think you keep Lonnie Johnson. You traded for him. I think they keep Josh Williams. I mean, Josh he's Williams, got uh, another guy that had a big play in OTA yeah, yesterday. They said that he's was the got, best play. He had a, a – sky high interception like in traffic Dude. come down with the ball yeah they liked what they saw from him he's Jaylen too Watson. athletic Jalen Watson's my other guy yeah so I mean I don't know where to go here but I think I'm gonna stick with what you just said I think that probably Boodle Barku is still gonna be your practice squad players DeAndre Baker might even just get cut to be quite honest yeah he's just one of those guys that beach signed because he was a high draft pick when he came out. He's a first round draft pick. He had a lot of talent, but I just don't think he ever lived up his, to it. His injuries. Right. So, I mean, Lonnie Johnson, at worst, he's going to be like your Mike Hughes, right? You got a veteran guy that's going to put in good snaps and be there when you need him to be. But, I mean, he's much better than Mike Hughes. He's like in a different league than Mike Hughes, is he not? Yeah. I mean, they're kind of similar. Mike Hughes was drafted in the first round, never lived up to hype. So. Yeah, but they're kind of different guys. Like, uh, like yeah, they Johnson's are a long, big, it's just cornerback. Yeah, just similar stories, I guess. But uh, yeah, I think Lonnie Johnson can play. I don't know. I honestly couldn't tell you who's going to start. I would say Sneed and McDuffie start on the edges, and maybe Fenton plays the slot. But then where does that leave Lonnie Johnson and and Williams? Like, we're going to have some rotation corners like crazy. Don't talk about me when I'm gone. Oh, honey, though our friendship 